Father God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We come to get it because we want a dose of the word of God. Let's go. I know it's 658, but I just can't help. Let's, go. Let's just go. Did I do that? Uh, there, it was loose. It was loose. It's, it's good to go. I'm good to go. Mm -hmm. That's Keisha. Lindsay. Debbie. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Go to Ephesians. What do you think I'm going to read? What do you think I'm going to read? Do you think that's a good one to read daily? Do you think that's a good one to read daily? Mm-hmm. Verse 17. Ephesians 1.17. Oh, Father. You're the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're the Father of glory. Mm, I thank you for giving us your spirit, your wisdom, your revelation. I thank you for the knowledge of you, Father. I thank you for the eyes of my understanding, our understanding. They're open, they're enlightened, so that we know what is the hope of your calling, what is the riches of your glory, what is our inheritance as your saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of your power toward us who believe, according to the working of your mighty power, which you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead and seated him at your own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Daddy, thank you for putting all things under Jesus' feet, for giving Jesus to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. We're the body, you are the head, and we are the fullness of you that filleth all in all. Go over to three, he says. Chapter 3, oops. For this cause, for what cause? Because of what he has given us, we bow our knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, and that you would grant us according to your riches and glory, that we would be strengthened with your might by your spirit and our inner man, and that Christ you may dwell in our hearts by faith. Oh, da, de, 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 de. And that Christ you may dwell in our hearts by faith by faith and with belief <laughs> that we might be rooted and grounded in love that we may have to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height and we would know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that we might be all filled with the fullness of God now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to that power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. He is more than enough. Amen. You want to get more of him? Yes. yes, we want to get more of him. Okay, so what I, I, I want to just lay a little groundwork here first. Can I do that? Um, Now we know from Sunday's sermon that there was a burden that we had on us. For instance, in the Old Testament, they did not know there was a Satan. They couldn't have done anything to keep him off their back anyway. They didn't have the authority that was given to the devil by Adam and Eve. But what they had to do was follow rules to stay under the protection of God. That's why we've got it so much better. And the spirit of the Lord would come upon people and anoint them to do something. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, what, what we have got, we've got the fullness. Now, what does the devil want? The devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy. How is the only way that he can get at us? How is the only way he can get at us? Tell me. By deception, by deception, by deception, mm -hmm. by deception. He de he's a deceiver. How did he deceive Adam and Eve? 
deception. It was a, oh, he's not giving it all to us, is he? He's not giving it all to us, is he? He's a deceiver. See, now, I, I, I've, got to, I've got to get this across to you so that we can go a little further because this is something that the Holy Spirit was working with me. And that is, you know, when I was going through this situation with my body mm-hmm. and with the, 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 they were calling it tumors, lump in my breast and lymphatics and stuff like that. Is, and I was thinking about that and talking about that in prayer tonight. And, and, I, and I was thinking, Lord, now, how was that again? So when you look over in Mark, you'll see that, the, and you don't have to go there because we've got a lot to cover, but they couldn't drive out the demons. The disciples couldn't drive out the demons, could they? Did they have faith? Say yes. Because and Jesus had not went to the cross yet, but that was given to them. His faith, which is pure and holy, was given that's all you have to do is a grain of mustard seed faith. But why couldn't they del- cast him out? Because it says in Mark, because of your unbelief. So what is the difference between <coughs> faith and unbelief? Why was it that when I went to that doctor, to my doctor, knowing when she checked me from the 17th, from the appointment I made from the 17th to the, what was it, the 23rd? Anyway, the end of the month. Why was I so certain that there was nothing there anymore? I had seen the pictures. And some of you, I showed the pictures, and it didn't look good at all, all the lumps and, and the fan, in the lymph natics too. But it was because I believed. We have faith that God will heal us, but do we believe for ourselves that it's going to happen? In every situation, what we need to do is to meditate on Joshua 1.8. He says to meditate on the word, that that is true, but you already have it. Believe that you already have it, and that you can (coughs) overcome any situation. Now, if you don't, you stop and you back up and you say, what did I do wrong? Where did I miss it that I am not getting this? You can't blame it on to anybody else. You can't blame it on to the devil. Because the devil is powerless. He can't do it. But is it because we don't believe that he did it for us? Remember the old thing, Paul Thorne? We used to, some of you come from out of a church where, oh, Paul Thorne, God put that on him. Remember? And good old Job, the Lord give it, the Lord take it away. Well, we know that wasn't God, don't we? Because it does not line up with the Bible. Because every good and perfect gift is from above. That cometh down from the Father of lights, whom there is no fair evil, no strength. And it goes on and on and on of how good God never did one thing wrong to us. Not even in the Old Testament. Because whenever something went wrong in the Old Testament, it was because of disobedience. Right? Yes. There. Okay, so now, looking, looking forward... We can have faith, that grain of mustard seed, I love that. So all you have to do is have a grain of, because you have the same faith in you that's in God. Because who's in you? Who's in you? The Father, the Father, Son, and the Holy is inside of you. All right? So you've got that faith, but it's our belief our unbelief that, that wipes us out and puts, puts the, the door between us and God. Oh, I don't think he can do it. I think he's done that for other people. You know, I've had this for 40, 50 years. What the heck? I might as well go. I'm, I'm going to die. You know, I'm going to die from this, don't you? You know what? My mom died from this. My aunt died. You know what? It just runs in my family. And I'm a born-again believer, and I'm out there saying, Oh, God is good. God is good. God has healed me. I'm blessed and highly favored by God. Do I have faith, but do I have belief? Do I really believe that I have healing, I have wealth, I have whatever this word says? It's up to our belief. So I'm thinking, I'm going back and thinking this through. 
I was talking to Pastor Kenny, we were talking about different things this morning, and I thought, God, I've got to get that settled in my mind. It was because I believed that my body, that, that couldn't be in my body. It, it can't be on there. So when they took the ultrasound and the guy came back and he just stood there, you know, hands down, just smiling, because you're laying down yet, you know, and because uh, you have to see if they got, took enough pictures or whatever they do. And he says, we can't find it. And I said, I know. Why did I have so much peace? Because of my belief that this word is true, but that he had to do it for me. He has to do for me what he did for Jesus. God has to do it. Okay? Now, in John it says, Jesus only did what the Father showed or told him what to do. Remember when they said, oh, and he says, hey, don't you know, where's the Father? Who are, and he says, well, don't you know the Father? You see him in me. Remember that all? Okay, so if we have to go to any of those things as raisin, we will. But when it comes down to it, what do we believe? Do we believe we're healed? Do we believe we're prosperous? Do we believe what we say? Now, this is something that, that I was thinking on, too. You know, some people just blah, 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 blah. It's always, <coughs> and they don't even mean half the stuff they say. They don't even realize what they're saying. I was there. You, do you know what I'm talking about? You, 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 kids, you're going to get it. You stop doing that. You, no, 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 no. That time with Tracy. You know, you stop that or else. And she goes, Mom, tell me a little bit about the or else. <laughs> Hair on the back of my neck went up and I said, oh, you know, and she just settled right down because she knew Mama was mad. But it, it was just stuff that was ridiculous for me to say or else. She, she shut me down. She's just a kid. But do we b really believe what we say? Or do we say so many things that we don't even believe ourselves anymore? Do you think about that? Did you ever think on that? Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Is that true? Is that true? Well, I'm going to do this, Donna. I'll be here tomorrow at 9 o'clock and I come at 10 o'clock or I don't come at all. It is my word, you know what I'm saying? So, do you believe that this is for you? Do you believe it's taking care of you? Do you believe you're restored? Do you believe you're prosperous? Do you believe you're healed? Do you believe that you have a good marriage? Do you believe you have good children? Do you believe there isn't anything you can't learn? Do you believe it? See, I'm believing. Uh, we just switched from, from uh, direct to, to dish. And they come in with all this new stuff, and they're oh. And so, am I right? I was going through, I got everything that I needed to get to go back and forth. And then today, Keegan had to come and unhook the box because I saw all those wires back there. And I didn't want to take a chance because of my unbelief. I could have done it in it, in it, but my unbelief. So then he came, he showed me what to do, boom, 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 boom. After he left, boom, 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 I'm going through it. I got it, I got it, I got it. Now listen, I'm not, some of you just have that stuff automatically. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, but now I do. But don't put me on your TV, right? Don't give me your cell phone. You know, you're, we're always learning. We're always learning new things, aren't we? There isn't anything impossible when you say, "I've got it in me. I've already got it. I've already got it. I've already got the anointing." As we were talking about, I said, "I already have the anointing in me." What is the anointing, Christ? What is Christ the Messiah? What is the anointing? What does the anointing do? It breaks what? The yoke. It breaks the yoke of bondage in any area of your life. It breaks the bondage in every area of your life. 
You know, like even decorating my house for Christmas, I'm like, yeah, because Debbie and, and Keegan and, and Megan has came, and I thought, no, I'm just going to just start doing it. And I went and got some new stuff, and, and I'm going, Lord, what should I do with this and that? Well, look at that. Look at that. But it's the Holy Spirit. Now, can I say, Holy Spirit, show me? Yes. Why? Why can I say, Holy Spirit, show me? In Jesus' name. Because the Word told you. It, what, who is the Holy Spirit? I What's his... Comforter. He's our guider. Our guider. He leads us. So why aren't you talking to him, right? I'm always, right, I'm always talking to him. What should I do with this? Things that are very, very simple. They're not simple to me, but he wants every area of my life. He wants so much intimacy with me, with you. He wants you to be involved in every little thing with you. He wants to be so involved because he wants you to see how much he cares. And the more you share with him, the more you feel his love and you go, oh, daddy, you're so good. And then you get all smudgy and kissy and you don't, you know what I mean? So now you have already got the seed in you. That's the word. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost is in you, right? When you got born again, all of it's in you, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And then, did the Holy Spirit come in too? Yeah. Yes. Did Jesus come in? Yeah. The Father, Son, and the Holy are all in you. Yeah. Do you have faith? Yes. Yeah. Do you have to build your faith? No. It's already there. Yeah. Now, remember last week, how do we bring our faith out. How do we bring out what we want? How do we do it? How? With our words. With our words. Mm -hmm. Give me an example. Just saying, by his stripes I was healed. By his stripes I was healed. Now, just a little, a little something. What if, what if, oh, thank you. Um, yeah, because Dixie <laughs> said too, you know, we can't hear people, so they're listening. Um, <laughs> Do we have to bind the devil? Because God tells us to. Okay. How about somebody who has a stubborn, maybe a wife is stubborn to something. Maybe a husband is stubborn to something. Maybe a child is stubborn to something. Maybe your teacher, maybe a neighbor, whether they're born again or not. Is there an evil spirit that's holding that person back? Yes. Do you get to bind that? So when we bind that evil spirit, what happens then? Then we loose that from them. Can we tell the angels or the Holy Spirit to go minister to them? Yes. That's the way it works, isn't it? So we, we have the power because Jesus Christ gave it to us. Mm -hmm. Remember? Mm -hmm. Jesus, you got to go and you look what he, he gave you everything. He said you're a co-creator with him in, in Genesis 1.26. He said he's given you all the authority. He's given you all the authority over the fish, the sea, the birds of the air, over everything. Then he disarmed the devil. And the devil can't do one thing to you but to deceive you. Deception. By getting you to think, oh, this isn't working. Oh, poor little old me, I got it so hard. Pastor Kenny isn't doing the dishes. He isn't doing the laundry. I got it so hard. And some of you are sitting there, get a real life. You don't know what I have to put they up with. They know I do it all. <laughs> <laughs> he will. He will. So, but, but I mean, you know, we, we get pity party. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I got this one trained. Fifty-three years I got him trained. <laughs> but but um, it, but but look at how we get into pity parties. Do you? Let me see. Okay. Sometimes we do. Yeah. What do we do when we get in the pity party? Stop it, because deception comes, and the devil is coming to steal, kill, and destroy. Is that true? Yes. So now, how do we get what, we've, what we have need of? If you're 
healing is being held back, stop and ask the Holy Spirit, what do I do? Do I bind a spirit of what? A generational curse? What do you bind? Do you see what I'm saying? How about poverty? What, did that run in your family? That may have ran in your family, and you say, poverty, you stop in the name of Jesus. Poverty did not run in mine. It did not run in mine. Okay? I always expected more, and I still do. So do we get to bind the devil? Yes. And binding him does what to him, Tim? Do you know what it does? If you bind somebody up with a rope, what does that do? Uh, wraps them up. That ties them up. Ties them up. That ties them up that you cannot get loose. You can't, you can't, you can't get loose. You are bound. So when you bind the devil, you're binding the devil over that person or over something that's holding you back. You know, like your car doesn't start. Car, you start, and it doesn't start. You go. Satan, get your hands off my car in Jesus' name. Now you start. Do you see what I'm saying? So there's times when you're going to have to do that. Because doesn't it say in Matthew, bind? Mm -hmm. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. So everything is scriptural so far. Is that true? Yes. Okay, so we're binding the devil. What is he, is he bringing poverty? Does there always seem to be your living Every week off the paycheck. I mean, when am I going to get a hint? That's a spirit of poverty. Bind that sucker. Get off of me in the name of Jesus. Angels, you go get my money and you bring my money in. They're your servants and they stand. They don't sit. Right? Yeah. Right. right. What do you need money for? Mm -hmm. To the father the kingdom of God. And all of you love to give. You love to give to the kingdom of God. To further the kingdom of God. That's what it's all about. And it's fun, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions this far? So you've got it. How, again, do you get what's inside here, out here? Our words. Our words. Do you have to bind the devil? Mm -hmm. yes. Could be. Or do you just speak it? But once you speak it, do you believe it? If there's unbelief and that things aren't happening, you say, Lord, I need help with this one. I'm going to find out, hey, wait a minute, I'm going to meditate on the word on all the scriptures that tells me I have the authority in everything I have. Then I'll start to believe it more and more and more. And all of a sudden, you'll just take it by faith. You'll just, no, nope, that belongs to me. No, that, no, no. That car out there belongs to me. Got it? Amen. You're going to get sassy after a while. So Ephesians 4.13 says, Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. What he's wanting us to do is to walk in the fullness of the anointing. That's not on your sheets. Okay. He wants us to walk in the fullness of of the anointing. The only way you're going to get through stuff is through the anointing of God. Yes. There is no other way. No, no, no. Got it? Well, you know, I was this and that, and I wasn't born again, and I got healed. You might have had a mama, a grandma, a cousin, a friend, binding the devil and praying for you. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. Now, Let's go to our study. I'm going to put this out here. We're on outline number two, and we're going to have Pastor Kenny start to read. Oops. On page 13, correct? Right. Pray in faith. God's the one with the transmitter. He's the giver of all earthly and spiritual blessings, Ephesians 1, 3. And he's already transmitted them to you. Everything comes from God, but he's already transmitted. If you aren't seeing them manifest in your life, the problem isn't with God's transmitter. You need to fix your receiver. 
Yet when most Christians don't feel joy, they go to the Lord and ask, Oh God, where's my joy? What's wrong? Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Have you sung that song? It's a great tune, but the words are actually taken from an Old Testament scripture. Now we've got that, don't we? It's an Old <clears throat> Testament scripture. Go on. Create in me a clean heart, O God, a renewing right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with, the, with thy fear, uh, free spirit. Psalms 51, 10 and 12. David prayed this in repentance of his sin with Bathsheba. However, for a New Testament believer to say, O oh God, cast me not away from your presence, please don't leave me, is an insult against what Jesus came to do. David didn't have a covenant that promised God would stick with him through anything. The old covenant was based upon performance. So God did come and go. Old Testament people weren't born again. Now, now you've got an understanding of this now, don't you? You see why some of your psalms and some of the word isn't for you? Because now you're in the new? Go ahead. They didn't have an eternal redemption the way it is spoken of in the new covenant. Hebrews 9, 12 to 14. However, Jesus promised, I will never leave thee. So now in the Old Testament, he used to come upon people. The Holy Spirit would come upon people, right? right. Now he's in us, and he'll never leave us. He won't come upon and leave and come upon and come. He's there to stay. Amen. 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 Jesus promised, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, Hebrews 13, 5. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, Matthew 28, 20. If you are been born again and don't feel the presence of God, for you to pray this prayer that David prayed and say, cast me not away from your presence, renew a right spirit within me, and take not your Holy Spirit from me, means that you don't understand what benefits you have in your covenant. You're unbelief, not believe in the new covenant. <clears throat> That's exactly what pastor was uh, teaching to open up the service. Uh, to have the faith that you have that belief. And if you don't have it, then you're in that unbelief. Yeah. So, <clears throat> instead of praying in unbelief and then wondering why you aren't seeing better results, you need to pray in faith. It's the prayer of faith that will save the sick. Jesus 5.15, it's the prayer of faith that will bring you to deliverance and joy. Say, Father, I don't feel like you're here. There's simply no tangible indication of your presence in my life right now. Everything has gone salt. But Father, your word says that you'll never leave me nor forsake me. So I know that you're here. Whatever is causing these problems in my life is not you. I know that you haven't forsaken me. I ask you now to help me. See what I've done to turn away from you. As I seek you, please help me make the connection and release this life you've placed inside of me. I know your Holy Spirit is still here. I know your blessings are still here. I'm believing that they'll be released. I refuse to have these other things. That's a praying a prayer of faith. Do you see like how, you know, when you get down and out, what do you do? What do you do? I know that you're here. Do you ever feel like that? You're all alone? But I know that you're here. Now David did do that in a lot of the Psalms. Go on, Pastor Kenny. Yeah, actually, too, like when we've been listening to Bill Winston, like he he uh, teaches when we have something that comes against us that we're saying, you know, you're not here. Where are you, God? You need to go to the scripture and find a scripture for that certain thing that's coming up against you. Yes. So. Absolutely. Defend your position. There's still a fight. But the fight is to stand in the victory that God has already purchased for you. Not to go out and win one, that's a big difference. Well, in the Army, I discovered that defending a position that was already held is much easier than trying to take a new one. If you were on top of a hill and had the advantage of a defensive position, you could hold it with five men. But a hundred men would be required to take that same position. 
much more effect is needed to go conquer something you don't yet have than to defend something that's already yours. Okay, because it says in Romans 8, 37, but despite all this overwhelming victory is ours through Christ, who loved us enough to die for us. In another version it says, we are more than conquerors. We're more than conquerors because of him. Now if you start believing that, that means everything you speak, everything that comes up against you, you have conquered it because Christ conquered it. Amen. Would you, no, I take it. I, no, no, Christ conquered it. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. That means I'm not going to give up. No, that belongs to me. No, it belongs to me. Got it? Yeah. Go ahead. You need to believe that you're already blessed. Now, if you don't believe that you are blessed, then you need to go to Ephesians 1, 3 and and get that scripture inside of you. Get it in your heart. God has already given you healing, wisdom, revelation, prosperity, joy, peace, everything that you'll ever need. Okay, this is the book he's talking about next by Andrew Wilmick. I think if you get it, you, it'll really bring you into a higher level with him. Why? With, with God. Because you realize what is in you, what body, soul, and spirit, and how it's fun. It's excellent. Um, my teaching, spirit, soul, and body goes into much more depth on that very truth. It reveals from God's word how your born again spirit is already as perfect, complete, and full of, bless of God's blessings and power as it ever will be throughout all eternity. One third of your salvation is over. Your spirit is completely saved. It's identical to Jesus. It has his joy, his peace, his knowledge, his love, and his fruit. Everything that's true of Jesus is true of your born-again spirit. There's no inadequacy. It's not in the process of growing up into these things. It's not that these things are in your spirit in seed form, but they have to mature. Know they're already complete and fully grown in spirit. All you have to do is renew your mind and let these things manifest themselves through you. If this isn't a revelation to you, you need to fully understand what I'm sharing. Now, i got to just say this real quick. You know that you have a spirit, but then Jesus has a spirit. God has a spirit, so his spirit came into you. His spirit is perfect, and that's what you're working off of. God has already done it. This isn't just in principle. It's not just written on a piece of paper somewhere. There was an actual transformation that took place in your spirit the very moment you were born again. Now you have love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. That's Galatians 5, 22 and 23. You are right now in your spirit, identical to Jesus. 1 John 4, 17 and 1 Corinthians 6, 17. The same power that raised Christ from the dead now lives inside of you. Ephesians 19 and 20. It's indefinitely easier to release something you know and believe you already have than it is to try to go and get something you don't. If you're not absolutely convinced that you already got it, you'll either submit to or have to battle thoughts that you won't get it. However, once you know it's yours, how could you doubt that you'd get it? This is simple but so profound. Again, we're going to remember everybody has a heart. Mm -hmm. Do you have a heart that pumps? Yes. Yes. Do you have blood? Yes. Do you have a liver? Yes. Do you have a gallbladder? Maybe somebody who doesn't, but they do. All right. You, you, you have large intestine, small colon, I should say, and small. You have hmm? mm -hmm. lungs. You have all that, but you can't see it. But you know you've got it. This is you've got it all. You just have to bring it out now. And, and how do you do it? By identifying with Jesus. We need to identify with Jesus that we are just like him in our spirit man. That's the way he made us. Drawing the line. When my wife and I first started out in ministry, we were so poor we couldn't even pay attention. <laughs> Have you ever heard that before? <laughs> I think I heard uh, Copeland say the same yes. thing. Yes, yes. The Lord has already blessed us with financial prosperity, but I wasn't cooperating with his laws for releasing it. In fact, I was violating a number of instructions in God's word. Therefore, we really struggled until I learned some things and adjusted accordingly. 
God loved us and we didn't starve to death, but we didn't prosper until we understood how his kingdom works and began to cooperate. During that period of time, I didn't even have a complete Bible. Mine had gone through a via, uh, Vietnam with me. It was so beat up and marked up that most passages could hardly be read. Also, some entire books had fallen out and been lost. Here I was pastoring this little church in Seagullville, Texas, without a full Bible. Right or wrong, I made a decision. Father, I have to start seeing your power to manifest somewhere. If I can't believe you for enough money to buy a new Bible, how am I going to believe you for enough money to lead people into salvation and see them healed, delivered, and baptized in the Holy Spirit? I just made an issue out of it saying, God, this faith either works or I'm going to die right here. The outcome of this battle determines or not, am I going on? To me, this was non-negotiable. So I started believing God for a new Bible. All told, it took me six months to get enough money to buy it. It's not that this wasn't my priority, it's just that the finances were, were tight. My wife and I would go, to two, go two or three weeks without food, even when she was eight months pregnant, because we didn't have it. I'm not exaggerating when I say it took six, me six months to believe for an extra $25 to go buy a Bible. To some people, financial trouble is having $1,000 in the bank and $1,100 worth of bills. We didn't even have a bank account, much less any money to put in it. There were days when we'd go without a penny in our pockets. I'd even pick up Coke bottles just to get gas money. Satan plagued me that entire time. I fought doubt constantly there probably wasn't a 10 minute period of time during my waking hours for six months that I didn't have some thought of like, it's not going to work, you'll never get it. You don't even have a Bible. Some man of God you are. I have to throw down those thoughts and say, no, in the name of Jesus, I do have a Bible. I fought these constant unrentling thoughts for six whole months. Finally, I had enough money, so I went to the bookstore and bought a Bible and I had my name engraved on it. It was mine. After I walked out the door with that new Bible under my arm, I never again doubted that I could get it. Well, of course, why would you doubt that you would get something you already got? My point exactly. Do you know why you have to counter this thought? I'm now, going now, you do understand what just was said there. You've got it now. So he had it when he asked, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Do you know, know why you have to counter this thought? I'm going to die immediately after praying. Oh Lord, please heal me. It's because you don't believe you've already been healed. Mm -hmm. You believe God can heal you, but you're waiting on him to do so. That's wrong. God has already blessed his healing power. You aren't waiting on God to heal you. God's waiting on you to appropriate what he's already done. Isn't that a wonderful thought? He's just waiting on us. Oh, God, when are you going to do this? Um, I've already done it. God, when are you going to give me a heart? You've already got it. When are you going to give me a brain? You already got it. When are you going to give me a liver? I already got it. You understand. Believe and receive. It's like that television signal. The signal's already being broadcast. If you aren't seeing the picture, it's not God who isn't transmitting. It's your receiver that isn't working right. You need to get into the owner's manual. God's word and start stuttering. Find out how to turn that thing on, tune it in, eliminate the static, and deal with things to get the best reception. Don't say I'm waiting on God. That's not how it works. By whose stripes ye were healed. First Peter 2.24 emphasizes mine. God is waiting on you to believe and receive. Since I began teaching this, I've seen a tremendous increase in the amount of of people receiving their healing. They are no longer just asking and waiting God to do it. Instead, they're believing what God, what the Lord has already done. They're taking their authority and commanding what has already been provided to come into manifestation. Their results have been awesome. My oldest son, Joshua, became sick and looked like he was going to die. Jamie and I fought it, stood against it, and finally he got better. This happened several time, years in a row. Finally, I saw this coming back on him again and sought the Lord about it. I prayed, Lord, what's wrong? 
He answered, the problem is that you are fighting to get healed instead of fighting because you've been healed. You're trying to attain healing instead of defending the healing you already have. Once I understood this, things turned around. Don't fight to get healed. Fight because you've been healed. Don't fight and attempt to attain healing. Fight to defend the healing that's already been provided for you in Christ. Allow this revelation to sink in and change your attitude toward everything you receive from the Lord. Okay, now, when, like he says down here in 1 Peter 2.25 on page 18, he says, God is waiting on you to believe and receive. He wants you to believe. He wants you to believe and when you believe, you will receive. That's a promise. And, and because sometimes we put that wall up and we think, how am I ever going to get this? How, how I never had this, I never had that. You know, we cut ourselves off because of religiosity. That makes sense, doesn't it? Because of religion. You know, my mom and dad never did this. They never took a trip here. They never took a trip there. Why can't you? You want a brand new truck, why not? I gotta tell this here, oh, I just met Michaela back there and she comes and she says, I got my car last night and it's everything we prayed for. <laughs> Even the blue, Pastor Jen. Because we were talking and I said, why can't you believe for that blue? I don't know, but I want this. And I said, Michaela, why can't you have this and this and this? And, but you can have this, but you can have this. No. She was so excited. We're standing there talking. She's got everything in it. I got everything. <laughs> Why not? God had to put that in there for her. And it's the color blue. And there aren't that many color blues out there, that particular color. Why not? Just edge them on a little bit. Just, just give them. Come on. Oh, I don't deserve that. You know, this. You know what? I'd rather buy a used car than a new one. Well, I'm going to give you a choice, Debbie. You're, I'm going to give you a brand new one. I don't care what kind you want. I'll give it to you. You color the whole, or you get that old clunker. You're going to take the new one. We say that, that we'll get the old one because we don't feel or believe we can get what we really want. Is that true? Yeah. So now what, what we need to do, we need to, to go forth and, and to see what has God promised for us. And what, remember, God wants us to be, you know, look in the mirror. The Bible is the mirror, and this is in you. This Bible is in you. This here, everything that's written in here is in you. When you look at what's in you and you start it, whoa, 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 that's in me. Ooh, mm, oh, mm, more than I could even imagine. Ooh. You start looking in that mirror. This is the mirror. Remember you said that mm -hmm. in James? So now we look and we say, I have a right to that. Then you start working on that. Don't go blabbing it all over because people will steal. Oh, you can't do that. Are you kidding? No. We steal each other's things because of our unbelief. Instead of saying, you can do it. You can do it. Isn't that what the great cloud of witnesses are doing? It. What are they doing, the great cloud of witnesses? They're egging us on, so to speak. Is that true? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So now let's, let's do this here. Let's go to our questions. Okay. We're going to go to our questions, and then this is for your good, right? Yeah. Pastor Kenny, you want to read those? It's warm in here. Is it warm in here, or is it just me? <laughs> well, we got to warm in that, that prayer room. You get warm back there because you're all, you know, you're, you're just giving her. Okay, check your receiver. Lesson two. Okay, first question. According to Ephesians 1, 1 through 3, we have past tense. Been blessed with what? So we've got it all. We're all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. That Christ is the anointing. You have the anointing. The anointing is what makes things happen. 
You have the anointing in you. That's what makes things happen. Next one, Pastor Kenny. According to 1 Peter 2.24, we were, past tense, healed by what? Stripes of Jesus. Go ahead. Uh, read Ephesians 1.19-21. The power that raised Christ from the dead and set him at the right hand of the Father is to... Yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. The power that raised Christ from the dead and set him at the right hand of the Father is to... What does it say in the scripture? There, she's got the answer sheet. See that, that sheet with all the scriptures on? You have that? Yeah. Absolutely. What does it say? Aaron knows. They're searching. They're searching. That's okay. They're search. There. What does it say in the scripture? Right. Ephesians 1, 19 and 21. What does it say? Got it? Speak up. It's to come. Us word. Us word who believe. It's coming to us who believe. See, you've got the faith, you but now you have to believe. Us word who believe. Which verse did they? The from? 19 to 21. Did they pull it from the whole thing? Well, what, what, what I'm seeing here is... No, I'm just trying to process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, find mm -hmm. it. I don't think just the no, what you... What you mm -hmm, it is, but you know what? This is what you've got to do. You've got this here paper when you get the lesson, right? Go over those things. So that you'll get it, and this will just, and if you don't get an opportunity, it's not going to kill you either. But then you'll, you'll see, it's toward us. It's us. Okay. It's for us. Mm -hmm. right. Is that true? Okay, next one. Hebrews 13.5 tells us two things. God will never do. What are they? Hmm. I didn't hear you. Leave us or forsake us. So when you say, oh, I don't feel you hear God, is that true? Then what do we say it for? Because pity. Because what? Pity. Pity party. Good going. Okay, next. According to Matthew eighteen twenty, Jesus promised to be there in the midst of whom? Go ahead. Two or more are gathered together. Are you two or more gathered together in his, his name? name? Yeah. Two or more gathered together in his name. And you know, if nobody is there with you, you got you and the Holy Spirit. All right, go on. An Old Testament saint, David asked God in Psalms 51, 10, and 12 to create in him a what? Clean heart. Clean heart. And to renew what? A right spirit, spirit within, within me. me. Mm -hmm. David also asked God not to cast him away from his presence, nor take his blank from him. What is it? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Go ahead. What did David ask him to restore in him? The joy of his salvation. Now, we've already got the joy in us. We don't have to ask for restoration of that. We got it. Just when you're, when you're having a bad day, then what do you do? Speak to yourself in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, like it says in Colossians and Ephesians. Right? Yes. Go on. Ten. Read Hebrews 9, 12, and 14. How many times did Jesus enter into the holy place? You know. Once. 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 Right. He did it once. That's all he had to do is once. Yes. is that good? <laughs> what did Jesus uh, obtain from us? For us. For us, I mean. Eternal redemption. What purges our conscience from dead works? The what? The what? The blood of Jesus purges us from sin. The blood, the blood, the blood. Remember, when you take communion, it's the blood of Jesus that purged that sin from you. Your, your blood is pure. There's no way there can be sin in your blood. Do you make mistakes? But God doesn't account that to you, he says in his word. 
Because where are you seated in Ephesians 2, 6? Heavenly places. And you couldn't be seated in heavenly places if you had sin in your blood. Go ahead. Matthew 28, 20 tells us that Jesus is with us for how long? Always. Always. <laughs> 14. Even to what? The end of the world. End of the world. 15. According to James 5, 15, what shall, what shall save the sick? The prayer of a righteous person. The prayer of faith. Remember? Yeah. Mm -hmm. James 5, 15. Who shall rise them up? The Lord. Yeah. The Lord. Yep. 17. Well, what will happen if they have committed sins? When are they forgiven of the sin? When are they forgiven of the sin? Even before it was committed. But you break fellowship. That's why you've got to, you know, Lord, and, and you realize you've done wrong. You don't want to break that fellowship. Go on. Read Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Is there any law against the fruit of the Spirit? No. Law. 19. First John 4, 17 say, says that as Jesus is, so are blank in this world. Can you only imagine it? Just think of that. Just says that as Jesus is, so are we in this world. That's almost unthinkable, isn't it? According to 1 Corinthians six seventeen, those who are joined to the Lord are what? One spirit. One spirit. This is almost too much to handle, yes. isn't it? Meaning that, do you really believe we've got all that? See, that's where Jesus wants to, because he said we're supposed to be doing even more than he does. He tells, why does he tell us to fight the good fight of faith? Why, why does he, remember he was speaking through Paul in Corinthians, fight the good fight of faith? Why was he saying that? Because he knew the devil was going to fight you with deception. It does, kind of a trick question, does it, does the devil have power? No. no. Are you sure? Yes. How does he get power? Our word. Through us. Our through our unbelief. Through us giving him words to work with. Mm -hmm. And remember, I'm working on words for years. Mm -hmm. Now we understand how important those words are. Mm -hmm. Even the words in a song. Mm -hmm. yes. you know, what is the one um, in the eye of a storm? Can you just give a few lines from that, Debbie, where it gets into the eye of the storm? I know you do, because we talked about it. I, I just don't know all the words. I just, no, just where, it, just where it goes <laughs> against the world. I just don't know all the words to the song. Yeah. Um, it just, it, when a sickness takes my, my child away, and there's nothing I can do. And when you're going to lose everything. And when you're going to lose everything. See, see, it, so, so it, when, when, you know, it, it's saying you have no power. Why would you sing a song like that? You're going to believe it, right? No, you say, I can do anything through Christ who strengthens it. Get yourself a little dance going, right? But you're fighting the good fight of faith, meaning king on the hill, remember our king on the hill again? You're king on the hill. The devil's going to come and try to push you off. He's going to work through people. Right? Yeah. To get you to doubt. He's going to get you to doubt. But now how do you fight? How do you fight a battle? How do you fight a battle? With words, but tell me, give me an example how you fight a battle. Let's say I go, anybody? <laughs> Go ahead. I just said with the word. The Not word. Okay. Words. Give me an example of fighting a battle in the spirit realm. Give me an example. No, no? weapon formed against you will prosper. No weapon formed against me will prosper. What about, let's get right down to the brass tacks. What if, what if you don't feel good? What if your stomach feels like it wants to upchuck on you? What if you got a headache? 
What if you, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. What, do you, what if you've got a backache? That seems to, a lot of people, and that's because not enough water, especially in our diets. So now, how do you fight the good fight? You bind the devil of that foul spirit of pain or of sickness. Then you tell it to get off. And then once you tell it to get off, do you think it's going to stay there, the symptoms? Yeah. Almost all the time it's going to stay there. You might have to fight this thing for a day or two or three or four. But do you give up? No. 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 See, a lot of people, because they didn't feel it gone and the symptom is still there, they don't think God heard them. They don't think it's working. But that's fighting the good fight of faith. So you keep on and keep on. It's just like if you, you want something, you just keep on and keep on until you get it with your words. And you say, no, I'm not going to quit. No, that belongs to me. No. You see what I'm saying? You go to a store and you, you, the, the item was on sale. And you get up by the cash register and say, that's not on sale. No, no, that was right there, right there. No, I'm not leaving this store. Let me talk to the manager. I would do that. No, no, it says that. I want to keep them people honest. That's fighting the good fight. But do we fight that good fight for something that's coming against us? Do we fight that? Do we keep on until we see the manifestation of it? Yes. Yes. Any questions? I want you to tell me, just in short, if people would, where, what did you get out of, out of this tonight? What did you, are you feeling that you have learned something from this now? Do you feel like you're getting stronger in the word? And if so, would you share that? Now, last week we did, you know, studying, and, and did you start working the word by fighting the good fight and keep on and keep on until you saw the manifestation? Anybody? Everybody. Yes, Donna, give the. Yeah, I've really, really learned to stand on the word. I've been confessing that money keeps coming to me. Two weeks ago, God blessed me with $100 cash. Today, I was blessed with a $10 in cash. So giving you tithes and offerings makes a difference and standing on his word. So Amen. keep speaking it. Yes. You just have to call in money. Did Jesus call in money? Yes. Then if he did it, I can do it. Right? Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to go down and take it out of a fish's mouth. <laughs> right? <laughs> but, you never know. <laughs> but, but he showed us how to do things. He showed us how to do things without paying for it. Right? So... But we've got, we've got to take and realize that we've already got this in us. We've already got it, right? Yes. Yeah. So why don't we take it by faith? You have that mustard seed of faith, but now get your belief. Nope, I believe it. I believe it. And the devil's going to come along. He said, you're going to get that. You're not going to get that. You go, you wouldn't be coming against me so hard if you didn't know I was going to get it. So get out of here in Jesus' name. Get thee behind me, Satan. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay? Now, let's do this here. Let's give our offering. If you have an offering, that's up to you. But let's also um, take communion. Because with the covenant that you have, what does the bread do? What does the bread do? When we break the bread, that's showing that Jesus Christ's body was broken, so ours don't have to be. His body became sick, so that we don't have to carry that, right? Yeah. right? And then when we take the juice, when we, what does the juice tell us? It made us the what? The righteousness of God. So you're the righteousness of God, that means you're perfect. Amen. You're sinless. Amen. But I sin. No, no, we got to get out of that. You've made a mistake. Remember, Jesus Christ, if he took all those sins on his body, why are you trying to carry them? Because you don't know what I did. I don't care what you did. Here, just a minute. I've got to get mine out of here. <laughs> there. That was for her. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> Is this one yours? One of them is. 
<laughs> so now, I do hope, I do hope, folks, thank you, I do hope what you will do, guys, is that you will, you will take communion every day at home. Just take a piece of bread, take a cracker, I don't care. Um, take some water, take some juice, I don't care. But every day, Jesus wants us to take it every day. Why do we take it every day? Why would you? If you need to take it more than once a day, why would you take it? Because you're remembering your covenant. I took it more than once a day when I was going through this. Because you start to doubt. No, no, I'm taking communion. Your body was broken, so I'm healed. Did you hear me? Yeah, you got it, Satan. My body is healed. Look at that. I'm whole. And I'd put that cracker, I got those bigger crackers, put it back together and get real sassy with him. You're remembering your covenant. You remember what he's got for you and you take it because he's already taken what you have. Yes. Yes. Got it? So now we eat this because we have a covenant. So you just exchange what you don't like and you take what you want from him that he has. And now, his blood is running in our veins because he made your blood righteous. He made you righteous. He came into you. You are the righteousness of God. You're sanctified. You're made whole. You're set free. Amen. Drink it in faith. Thank you. Now, does anybody have a testimony of what happened, you know, when you use this study? Or just a testimony? Who has a testimony? Nobody? Nobody has a testimony? I'm going to tell you my testimony. Oh, good. My testimony is this. Last Christmas, I seen these um, Christmas plates. And I got a little worked up about it because everybody on the Internet was saying... They aren't coming out with the series next year. And, this, and the plates they had on, on eBay and everything, were ridiculous in price. So I was like, okay, I'm not, okay. I got four, I talked, I bid, and I got a lady to sell me four plates for my price, but I needed 20 more. <laughs> That's okay. So the other day, all of a sudden, I'm thinking about them Christmas plates, and the Lord says, just go on this site you're going to get your plates. And I went on there, and I could get as many plates as I want for the price I wanted to pay. Price you wanted them. Yes. I like that. Patience is a virtue. You just get, now you get to the point where it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. No matter what happens, it's mine. Who else? Uh, we, need a, we need a microphone right up to, now you know Michael more than anybody how people can hear. Get it up there. <laughs> where, where am I? I'm not talking yet. I'm thinking. Uh, <laughs> Aaron, don't jump in on that. Uh, I have been uh, praying lately for a uh, second job for myself because uh, I... Uh, I've been looking to uh, do something more, um, something different, something more, and uh, I was able to get a uh, interview today, and I got the job on the spot. So I have a secondary job that I get to earn an extra buck or two at. There you go. Amen. 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 Who else has a testimony? I know you do because I wouldn't keep on asking. Yeah, we got to get those moving real fast, don't we? Um, well, I don't know how long ago it was. I'd have to check. But um, when we filled out the sheets that were in the back there, um, I've been believing that our house is paid off and we had a home equity line of credit. 
um, and I was believing that both of them were paid off. We've had the line of credit for years, and it kind of just always stayed at one spot, and um, they're both paid off, and Brian is online now with no more borrowing. He even wanted to go online. He hasn't done it yet, but um, to fill out something so that no one else can take credit out in your name, and if you do, it costs you money, and so it's awesome. Praise oh, Lord. my Praise goodness, no. Because he was always the one, well, I'll just borrow the money, I'll just borrow the money, and I'd always say, no, if we don't have the money, if you don't have the money, you're not getting it. And now he's like, I want to put that thing on. I want to go fill that thing out online. So, Amen. Amen. Who else has a testimony? So mine is from a while ago, actually. Um, so I started working at Sherwood Animal Hospital in April. Um, that's back when I was an intern still. So I didn't fully get hired till I was June, but I was already kind of exercising my rights then. <laughs> um, so uh, Jed is a six-year-old golden doodle that always comes in. Um, he, for some reason, was losing a lot of weight. He got like cancerous lumps all over his belly and we could not find a reason. We mm -hmm. went into surgery, we took off the lumps, we sent them for like histopaths and they couldn't tell us anything. Um, and he went from 85 pounds down to 50 pounds. And that's a big loss for a dog, obviously. And so the fact that gold doodles are really close to my heart, I really want one. I can confess to that. Um, I exercise my faith and just randomly I was like in Jesus name you're healed whatever this is is getting off your body like you're an animal and I don't care I'm still going to use my faith with it mm -hmm. um and so that was back in like June that we did the surgeries and he was 50 pounds he came back in in August and his owner said, you know, he's been so down lately. His tail is down, his head's down. He's not himself. I don't know what's going on. And he always boards at our clinic as well. So I always go out in the yard and I play with him and he knows my voice. So he walked in the clinic and he was behind the big counter. Couldn't see me at all. And I just said his name and his ears perked up and his tail perked up and he started wagging his tail and his owner started crying because she didn't see him that happy in about three weeks. Oh my goodness. So then um, just out of the blue, I was like, let's get a weight check on him. And he had gained 10 pounds back, so he's up to 60 then. And then he came in a month later in September, and he's back up to his 80 pounds. The lumps went away. It's, he's the same dog that he was in the beginning now. Like We don't know what he went through. We still don't know to this day, but he's healed. There's no more cancer, and he's back to his normal weight. Amen. Gee, it works with animals. How about that? Anybody else? Well, um, God has blessed us. He told us to be fruitful and multiply and to replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that move upon the earth. So God has put it in us to do this, just like Bill Winston had shared with this car. And in 4.5 seconds, it goes from zero to 60 miles an hour because it's built into that car to do that. Like an airplane, it goes up where it's 55 degrees below zero, but that plane was built to fly in that kind of weather. Well, we are built to carry this anointing over and to bless other people. Amen. When you pray, when you pray for things, okay, you have that ability inside you. It, it's operating inside of you. Now, I'm going to real quickly ask you to agree together that we're going to right now agree for our government, for our president, President Donald Trump, each one of the people that serve. Okay, because right now all of these things that are coming down against people that are brought up to a position they're laying things on them that are not true, okay? That is wrong to do. But we know that the devil is loose. We're not going to get angry at people. We're going to get angry at the devil. So would you agree? We bind you, Satan, over our government, over our president, over every leader of our country. We bind you in the name of Jesus. We loose that foul spirit from that evil spirit from these people that are coming up against 
the people you have chosen, Father God, to lead this country. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. And whatever is wrong, make it right. And we thank you, Father, that the swamp is being cleared, but now the sewer is being cleared out so that we can live a quiet and peaceful life. Now, we also want this tax reform to come through to aid the people. The government was sent, was put together to serve us. Yeah. Now they have us serving them. Mm -hmm. That is wrong. Do you agree? Amen. So we're asking, Father God, that that be turned around now. We decree and declare that it is turned around now, and this tax reform goes through, and there is such a huge tax cut that people will go, whoa, I got several people that are laughing at me. When I said, you wait, you'll watch, you'll see it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I said, just remember, when you see it, call me and tell me how much you love me and you trust me now. In Jesus' name. Because we agreed now, if two or more come together, unless you guys love to pay the taxes you do, uh, I don't like to pay the taxes on my land. What, no, 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 no. Uh, what was it on, on, on TV last night? Um, on Hannity or something? How many millions and millions of dollars are paid for some of our people in the government that have done naughty things sexually and the government pays the people off, which is our money. Have I got that right? It's our, how many million? I think it was 15 point something. 15, 15 point million dollars last year just to pay off people. We paid off for those who are doing wrong and they got away with it and it stops now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory, we've got an agreement. Now, what we're going to do is next week, we're going to start with lesson three. Now, if we don't have your name, give us your name or your, your um, email, and we will send this out, lesson three, and it's called Accepted and Enlightened. This is really good. This one is really good. They're all good. Um, and then what you can do is download it, right? Take a copy, and uh, wh whoever doesn't have a computer, um, and you'll get yours here. Uh, and Mary is the other one, so we'll have to do that for her. But otherwise, we're going to email this to you, download it, start going over it, take your book, and on there you'll see the chapter, the third chapter. Okay, you'll see the third chapter and start reading that, but always go back and renew your mind of what you have learned. So you're building, you're building like a stair, from glory to glory, so you get more of an understanding. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you, we thank you, we give you the glory. Daddy, you are so wonderful. I thank you, Father God, we agree with you, we hate sin. And we stand with you, Father, in the precious name of your shield. God, you are holy. There is no God like my Jehovah. Hallelujah. We're going to see such miracles come out of you people. It's going to even surprise yourself. You're going to start truly speaking things and you're going to see them come to pass. And the more you get with believing this word, the more you're going to see victory. And you're going to see it not two weeks down the road, but now. Amen? Amen. 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 Yes. Can we do something for you? Yes, yep. they would like to do something for you. Okay, Will we do? How about if we move the plate so it doesn't get knocked over? Okay. The plate? <clears throat> I feel like I'm out in the middle. Heart of gold.
Oh, that was wonderful, kids. Thank you. Oh, that is awesome. You know, and last week, I almost forgot, last week I told you, remember we were talking about what sugar does in the body, and some of you are wanting to get one of the, the DVDs. Yes. Who would like to borrow one, and then please return it to me when you're done, no rush? Yeah, I did. Anybody else? It's, it's, yep. And I do have more. Okay. It, that is the best I've ever seen it put together. That is the best I've ever seen it put together. So it'll help you, and because I know it helps me. So that was awesome. I didn't know they were going to do that. Is that good or is that good? Are those kids just all... Oh, thank you. Okay, God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Oh, my.